we all have things from our childhood that warm our heart to this very day. Of course, depending on how old you are, those things can be a little different. For some, it is the starting theme to a video game that they worshipped as a kid. <laughs> For others, it's seeing a beloved character from their youth persevere and live on in other franchises. Who's here is this? Oh, it's a bad guy. This is big. He recovers. Oh, German the tournament winner. And for the really young ones, it's probably unforgettable gaming moments like this. Booga, still alive, shots going down, can't connect with that one, one build left, the final moment to Fortnite, roll oh cup! Oh my gosh! Bow Drop. down! Surprise. Bow down to Booga! Doesn't even matter! But there is one childhood stable that has been able to bridge that generational gap by using a very special, warm and fuzzy brand of Wholesome. Of course, I'm talking about none other than Bob Ross, the legendary yet long past Afro sporting artist from the 80s and 90s. Just sort of scrub them in, we don't care. This is your world and you can do any old thing here. So how did a man who died 26 years ago become the most watched art streamer on Twitch? What unforeseen role did he play in shaping one of the most goosebump-inducing online trends ever created? And why exactly has this soft-spoken brush magician who used to be on TV decades ago become one of gaming and modern pop culture's most recognizable and imitated figures? We don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Hey guys, it's Dimitri. Now, turning a mistake into a happy little cloud may not be easy, but you know what is? Switching to Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Be sure to check out the link in the description below for more info. All right, now let's get back to the video. Now, if there's anything you need to know about Bob Ross, it is that he was a man of many contradictions. For starters, he was born and lived the majority of his life in Balmy, Florida, but painted mostly frigid Alaskan landscapes, which were inspired by the 12 years he spent in America's coldest state as a member of the U.S. Air Force. I was almost 20 years old before I ever saw snow, and my favorite uncle, Uncle Sam, he sent me up there in January. Thought that would be funny. <laughs> It was funny. I, uh, I got off the plane, the first thing I did was stepped on the ice and fell on my bottom. As a man notorious for having one of the most mind-numbingly soothing voices in existence, you'd never guess that for a chunk of his 20 years in the military, Bob Ross was a drill sergeant who went about his day yelling at recruits to shape up. A role he grew so tired of that when he left the Air Force, bust him up Bobby vowed never to scream again. Put a little window in there. Toop. Little one over here. Loop. Now there's somebody at home. As for Bob's iconic afro, not what his hair actually looked like. While trying to get his painting venture off the ground, Bob Ross traded an army standard crew cut for a permed hairdo to save money on hair care. And sometimes hair gets a little crazy, you know, look at mine. Unfortunately for Bob, by the time he was making enough money to start getting regular haircuts again, the afro had become his trademark. So he had no choice but to keep it for the rest of his life. He hated his hair, but it was his trademark and he had to do it. And it really, really bothered him. And possibly the single most ironic thing about Bob Ross is that he was known to be an immensely positive man who encouraged people the world over never to doubt themselves. On this canvas, you're the creator. Anything that you want, you can build here. This is your world. 
But when it came to painting other humans, only one picture out of the thousands he created on his PBS show, The Joy of Painting, had a person in it. Maybe Bob Ross wasn't actually that fond of humanity after all. And you've heard me say this before. I hope you're plagued with dissatisfaction as long as you live. But what Bob Ross was unquestionably fond of was nature. He was a known lover of animals, trees, and of course, happy little clouds. Using just the corner of the brush, we'll put a happy little cloud. In his TV heyday, Mr. Ross was a true force for good. Not only was he raising money for various causes by auctioning off his works, he also encouraged the average viewer to give painting a try without feeling intimidated by the prospect of failure. I'm trying to teach people a form of art that anybody can do. This is art for anyone who's ever wanted to put a dream on canvas. It's not something, it's not traditional art, it's not fine art, and I don't try to tell anybody it is. For about 11 years, Bob Ross was, without a doubt, America's best known and most loved painter. Next letter comes from, uh-oh, <laughs> Martha, you ought to be ashamed for sending that. We're gonna put that aside. <laughs> uh, that was a little too personal. But in 1995, Bob's doting fans and the rest of the world were left shocked and saddened when they found out that he had succumbed to lymphoma at the age of 52. He really touched a lot of people and um, uh, made a difference in their lives. And I think the painting made a difference, but what he said made a difference. Just have a good feeling and be happy and, and in love with life and your world and, and sit down and begin playing. And if you feel good about yourself and the world, it'll show in your painting and all these little things will happen. Now, for most TV personalities, no matter how adored they might be, that would pretty much be the end of the road. But in Bob's case, it was only the beginning. PBS had some interesting stats in terms of how viewers engaged with the joy of painting. Even though the idea was that people would follow along with Bob, about 90% of them simply sat back and watched the program. Why? Because of Bob. I think sometimes we work too hard at painting. Painting should always be fun. It should make you happy. Bob Ross's deliberate movements and gentle monotone manner of speaking directly to the viewer was literally mesmerizing people and putting others to sleep in the best sense of the word. Viewers with insomnia claimed that the joy of painting would finally help them to doze off, or at the very least, to relax. And this is where we come to the fairly divisive trend that Bob Ross inadvertently helped to father. ASMR. You know, those videos of people pretending to do your makeup or like scratching their microphone for an hour straight. Well, good old Bob was basically an ASM artist way before the concept even existed. Just take a clean, dry, two-inch brush, and I'm gonna gently, gently tap, following the angles in the mountain. Always follow your angles. And even though reruns of The Joy of Painting continue to do well for PBS, younger generations were spending less and less time watching TV and more time online. So in 2012, in an attempt to introduce Bob to that younger audience, PBS remixed some of his most iconic quotes into a YouTube video that ended up going viral. Let's build a happy little cloud. Let's build some happy little trees. There are no limits here. Start out by believing here. And, of course, as millions of web literate teens began to discover the painting legend for the first time, it was only inevitable that some pretty dank Bob Ross memes began to emerge. I'm painting happy little trees, call me Jackson Pollock, because I splatter MC with the voice of Sue Celeste Rubens. I twist it up like your Rubik's Cube. Then in 2015, a full two decades after his tragic passing, Bob Ross continued his ascent into internet stardom when he became the face of the new creative section on Twitch. 
For its launch, the streaming platform aired every episode of The Joy of Painting over the course of eight and a half days, a broadcast that had a steady average of about 40,000 viewers the whole time that it was live. You can change your mind right in midstream. There's no commitments in this. Anything that you want, you can do. In the end, a whopping 5.6 million people had tuned in to watch Bob paint happy little trees. And Twitch was so impressed by these numbers that they decided to make these streams a weekly thing. Now, predictably, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows in chat. Even a stream as wholesome as Bob's was bound to have a few knuckle draggers trying to ruin everybody else's good time. Still, the stream was a resounding success, and to this day, Bob continues to be the world's number one most watched art channel on Twitch, complete with his own emotes and spirited rounds of GGs at the end of each broadcast. And it's not just the OG stream itself that attracts eyeballs. No, there are tons of Bob Ross parodies and paint-alongs out there that have amassed millions of views. Stay tuned, get ready, and A, try your best. That's all that matters. A few little happy trees there. Nothing wrong with making friends with trees. Now, what you don't want to do is eat these paints. Trust me on this one. So imagine, this is Martha, this is me, this is our boy Billy, who I haven't seen in 10 years. God knows what he's doing. And that's my heart. And this is her ripping my heart out. She's gonna rip out my heart. Uh, it's gonna hurt a little bit. It's gonna hurt a lot. But you know, that's just the name of the game. That's love. That's relationship. Hey, that's life. Why does he make trees look so easy and so complicated Maybe. for me? They look good! Uh, yay! And of course, uh, there's no such thing as that. mistakes, just, just happy little accidents. So considering that a man who has been dead for over a quarter of a century has more online clout than most streamers of today could ever hope to achieve, the obvious question is how does he do it? What is it about Bob Ross that keeps people of all ages and all walks of life coming back time and time again to watch him do his thing? Is it simply nostalgia? Is it the memes? Is it ASMR? The truth is that it's probably all of these things, and then some. In the last year and a half, Bob's stream provided a much needed source of social connection in a world paralyzed by a pandemic. I think everybody, everybody should have a friend. Friends are so important. As basically the Prometheus of publicly broadcasted painting, Bob brought what many people consider to be a highbrow elitist pastime to the average person. And his streams continue to carry that torch for him even now. It's not so much that he wants these to go in museums. He's trying to teach people how to do his techniques. And there are plenty of people um, who try his techniques and they work. And, um, and it gives people that sort of confidence. But on top of connecting us all and de-snobifying a beautiful, primal form of self-expression, Bob's veritable internet resurrection turned him into a beacon of positivity in a medium that is often severely lacking in good vibes. And perhaps most importantly of all, Bob Ross is the ultimate master of chill. Something that all of us, no matter what generation we belong to, could definitely try to learn from. Gotta have dark, gotta have opposites. Dark and light, light and dark, continually in painting. If you have light on light, you have nothing. If you have dark on dark, you basically have nothing. There we are. You know, it's like in life. It's got to have a little sadness once in a while so you, you know when the good times come. I'm waiting on the good times now. What about the, str the Prometheus of publicly access now? Because museums are by definition publicly accessible. <laughs> You know what I mean though? We can't just call them the Prometheus of art. Like that's insane, obviously. Like we need to like quantify oh, it. Art. Yeah, he started art, bro. <laughs> like Michelangelo who?